Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever it is for you. I'm Cycle. This is Let's Play Train Simulator. Well, last time we did a uh, Sabatolo de Casa Rock. So this time we're going to start right where we ended last time. We're going to head right back to Monument. Now, unfortunately, all of the remaining scenarios do go back to Monument. So we're going to have to uh, head back up the railroad for each of these. I'm not going to be able to keep a storyline going between all the different places here. We're going to have to uh, actually um, head back up to other parts of the railroads and because the other uh, scenarios tend to take place in different seasons it doesn't really matter anyway the only one that doesn't is the one that starts at Larkspur which is also in the spring but we do have a couple scenarios in the autumn and we have one in the summer as well and two of those are the F7 scenarios we already saw the winter one which didn't have a lot of snow on the ground strangely but uh, we are going to go ahead and just uh, finish the return trip because why not we did the trip the one way let's do the trip the other way and see how hard it is the other way or easy as the case may be so I'm going to go ahead and get onto the track. I will see you inside the stair. Before we re do, let's read it. Prepare an intermodal train for movement and transport. Intermodals in modern railroad history have become the backbone of the railroads. As one small tooth on the cog, mm, teeth. Uh, your task is to move 11 intermodals to Monument. The main line is busy, busy, so be prepared for delays. 35 minutes, easy. I'll see you in the scenario. Pick up the double stock flatbeds in the siding next to you. Okay, boss. We're, we're getting uh, to work right away, it looks like. So we're going to have to set our switch because, as you notice, the switch was set against us. And uh, we're going to have to... Uh, that switch is set for us. I just see we moved our way over across the uh, valley here. We left a train over there last time. They've gotten rid of it since then. But we're now over here on this side of the railroad. And we're going to be uh, working in this area to get going here. So let's move forward. And... Uh, our bossy boss here has an immediate task for us. Oh, reverser, of course. I always forget the reverser. <laughs> so I'm not going to go too fast because I'm going to have to come to a break almost immediately. Ah, two engines. Let's go to the back of the train. That's a little more accurate. So I'm going to put a little bit of a stronger brake application on there. Let's go ahead and hit the switch. And I believe those are the things we need to pick up. Yes, they are. So we're going to go ahead and put the reverser backwards. To take the brakes off. I'm going to put a small engine application on to, and that'll do for now so I can get into position. That's not how you get into position. Got to get my uh, worker guy into position here. We have a fence here. This will work. So I can put a little more speed on at this point. I'm going to do that. And the train is suddenly working properly again. So uh, every, the, the uh, mechanics seem to have fixed themselves now from the first scenario. I'm not sure why they changed on me in the first scenario, but they did. Now again, we don't have a timetable here. There's no uh, timetable. We can't fail for time. Now I need to start slowing down. That's good enough. And I'm going to slow down again. That'll do. The intermodals are ready to move out. Thank you very much. Is that uh, all the way to pick up? Go via Casa Rock Station Approach 2. Alright, we're on our way out of here. So let's check our switch. We are set for this path, but uh, whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. Center on me, please. Thank you very much. So you can see the blue path is indeed, it actually shall be that we are on the right path. But you should check the switch anyway. The blue path tells you that we're on the right area, but you should really check the switch and make sure the switches are going the right way. As you can see, they are. So, yeah, nothing else to really discuss here. Let's get going. Oh, that's a backwards. That's backwards. Don't go backwards. <laughs> How much room was there behind me anyway? Was there a room? Ah, oh, there's a little room. But probably the junction was set against us. We probably didn't want to do that. So 
So I'm just getting up to speed slowly here. Let's just check what we're doing after we get to the uh, first task here. Here's the approach. We're going to be continuing down to here, and that is indeed on our path. So it looks like everything is set for us, because now that's the main track. So everything is set for us. We're just going to watch for any signal that we need to uh, pay attention to. Is this a signal? Though that's a sign. That is a sign. As you can see, that uh, sign, if I can get rid of this, says that it's 45 and 40 are the speed limits on that track. So it looks like we're going to be able to get up to 45 and 40 right away here, which I appreciate. While we're over here, by the way, as you see, this is the uh, end of the route. So let's say, I, let's say that I were to turn around here and uh, go the other direction. Let's take a look. There is the hidden exit, right there. So now you know where the uh, ends of the railroad are from our from that and the video up at Monument. And I'm going to go ahead and release the uh, throttle because we're almost at 15 miles per hour. I don't believe we've seen any uh, mile markers yet. The mile markers I think only go in the one direction, but we have not seen any. So. Uh, We'll keep an eye out for the uh, last mile marker along the way here. So I'm going ahead and feathering the throttle so I can stay at 15. And we can now go up to 40. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up. Let's hear the engine. Boy, that's some get up and go, didn't it? That got up to 40 in a hurry. Those cement ones must have been full. These must be empty. So I've cut off the throttle because you don't necessarily have to go all the way to 40. We're going to go ahead and maintain speed for now. There is a 55 coming up. We know that from the journey here. So we're going to keep an eye out for the 55 as our time to move our speed up. I've cut the throttle off for a moment to stay at 38. You can see all the different markers coming up here. They're all very, very close. One right there, the next one right after it, the next one right after it, and then... So the first four markers are all right in order here for us. Castle Rock Station Approach 2, we're passing right now. And I am feathering the throttle now. So there's Castle Rock Station Approach 2 taken care of. We're going to Castle Rock Station through. There is the 50 coming up. We probably shouldn't be taking that curve of 40, but apparently we're able to. Is that a yellow? That is a yellow. We need to... No, that's not for us. No, it is our yellow. We just got a green, thankfully. So there was a train that was in our way, but we can go ahead and continue now. Yeah, I don't think we should be going 40 in that area. That should be more of a fit of a uh, 20, maybe a 30 at most, because that seems fast for that area. I might play that more realistically if I end up coming back there, because that seems very fast. So we're getting to Castle Rock Junction 1 right now. We did pass the through approach 2. And as we pass Castle Rock Junction, now we are officially on our way. Lake Spur is 10 miles away. Just like that, in about a minute, four tasks have been completed. And I'm starting to speed up to 40 now because we have that sign here saying that we're going to be going 50 in a moment. Passenger services can go 60.
and we can actually go up to 50 now, so let's purr again. Now, if you remember the drive on the way here, we had a downward gradient all the way here, so naturally we have an uphill gradient all the way to Monument. So we might have to listen to that engine purr a little bit. Interesting change in the audio there. I'm not sure what that was. And apparently we're getting speed on level one throttle, so I'm gonna cut the throttle for a moment so that we don't speed into the 55. Now we're gonna gain speed again. seen any traffic yet but I'm pretty sure we're following something because that that uh, changed from yellow to green at one point so we have to be following something down the line let's check this next signal coming up and sure enough we have a yellow so we're gonna prepare to slow down here we need to get slow enough that we can proceed past the next signal or stop at the next signal safely if we need to so 55 is no longer relevant to us so I'm gonna go down to 45 for now and I will prepare to slow down further as we get closer to the signal. Now, for your purpose, I'm going to show you what's going on ahead of us here. Ahead of us, there is this train that is literally stopped. This one is moving. I think we're following that cement freight. There's a container freight that's now coming in our direction. We're going to see him shortly. But seeing how slow that train is going, you now know that we're going to have to slow down for this and probably stop. But I'm going to try and drive cautious. I'm going to try to play it so that we only have to do a simple slowdown and not a uh, complete stop. for now, which I shouldn't have increased there, but I will maintain 35 for now. Because we've got a ways to go to our next signal. Temporary audio change for some reason. So if you, for some reason, have skipped ahead in this video, uh, you may be wondering why I'm not going 55. We are under a yellow signal right now. So we have to act like the next signal is red. The railroad cross crossing seems to be working this time. I think I ran through some cars at that one last time on the way into Castle Rock. Speaking of, looking out on the uh, side here, we're out of Castle Rock. Maybe it wasn't that one. I don't know. Front of the train. Oh, there's our signal we need to stop for. So I'm going to slow down even more. And I get myself down to maybe about 20. I'm going to peer out and look for the signal. It is a yellow, so we can proceed. Can't really see it clearly from this far back, but uh, with binoculars, you can see things a little further. So I'm going to get back up to 30. Hopefully it turns green by the time we reach it. That's the 
train we saw moving earlier, the container crate 1642. And again, we're crossing over that road we saw going in the other direction. The signal is still yellow. We are going to continue to drive with caution. It did not change to a green, so we have to be careful here. So there's actually a hint that is included with this scenario as I as I go ahead and drop our throttle a little bit here. I shouldn't have done brake and throttle at the same time there. But uh, we're getting a little hint with this uh, scenario as well. If you And by the way, there's no manual for this uh, route or for the other two that come with it but uh, in the package. But intermodal transport to Monument is... Uh, does, actually, uh, let me get back to that. Castle Rock Railroad and the other two routes are listed among the other routes in the Railworks 2 original manual from 2000, 2010-ish, I don't know, whatever that was, 2011. And uh, it has other routes that are known by different names now. For example, Oxford to Paddington, which I think is Great Western Main Line. Um, Bath to Templecombe, which I think is uh, Somerset Joint, Joint Somerset Railway or something like that, one of the Somerset Railways, North Somerset Railway maybe. And uh, York to Newcastle, which I think is Great Western Main Line or Great Eastern Main Line. Eastern sounds right because Newcastle is on the east. So um, those are original routes that came with Railworks 2 as well. So all of the routes and scenarios are listed in the Railworks 2 manual, and there are hints for every single one of them in here. Now, the information related to the routes that were changed over to a different name has been carried over to that. Um, manual for that route. So it has been copied into that manual. So for example, um, Great Western Main Line, you're going to find the information for Oxford to Paddington in there. The same chart that you see in this Railworks 2 manual is in that. Uh, but the ones for the fictional routes, you're not going to find anywhere. So the hint for this one says, when carrying heavy freight, it is dangerous to come to a complete stop on a steep gradient. You will lose time gaining the traction to get moving again. And with very heavy loads, you may be stuck. On the climb to Larkspur, take it easy and try not to stop on any gradient steeper than 1%. That's why I'm driving super cautiously. I do not want to have to stop at a red signal. So I'm staying at 29 for right now. We don't have to rush. There's no time limit. If there was, I'd know the signal was going to change and I'd just go anyway. But we're not going to rush. Now up ahead, you can see we do have a yellow signal, so I am going to go ahead and gain speed again. I'm not going to go beyond 40 miles per hour just to be safe unless we get a green signal. Then I will increase speed for a little while. We're now on a 0.9% gradient. We are still under the yellow, so we are going to continue to drive with caution. So this 55 mile per hour speed limit means absolutely nothing to us right now. So the first trip uh, trip was an easy road with nothing in front of us, and now we're getting the uh, more challenging drive where we have to follow a train. So this is a gradual progression in difficulty on these scenarios. I actually like the, the fact that I've uh, done them in this order without even realizing it because uh, we do have that gradual progression. Now I'm over 40, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the throttle back.
At this point, I'm just going to go ahead and lose speed gradually because, again, uh, if I keep the throttle at 25%, I gain speed and I could blow through a red. I'm going to just let my train lose speed gradually because I may lose about 10 miles off my speed by the next signal anyway. And uh, that way it gives me time, gives time for the signal up there to also change yellow. I seem to be holding speed around 39 on this uh, 0 0.8 gradient. I was not expecting that, 0.8%. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the throttle completely off at this point and just let my speed decelerate naturally. We're now down to 35 miles per hour. I'm going to resume the throttle at about 30 until I see the signal coming up, and then I will pay attention to what the signal is. And that will tell me what we need to do next. So there it is on the HUD. It is still about uh, 9 tenths of a mile away, but that is close enough to be concerned. So I am going to keep the uh, throttle at zero right now until I can see whether the signal has changed. By the way, on the mini map, I'm going to change it. Oh, it is centered on myself. Okay. There we go. This time I'm going to zoom in half a mile out. We cannot see the signal around the corner. So we have to continue to be cautious until we can see the signal. Speed limit is dropping to 40 ahead. You can't see it on the HUD yet because we are zoomed in going at the slower speed. By the way, that mile post, uh, given where we are right now, I believe that's about mile post 12 or something like that. So let's zoom back in and check the signal. We have a yellow signal. We're going to proceed. Now I've not been seeing whistleboards on this route, so we just have to basically honk whenever we come to a road crossing because we don't have whistleboards that I've seen. So that was a long, long, short, long. That's a typical uh, whistle sequence for passing a railroad crossing in North America, in case you're not familiar with North American Rail. Now there's already a signal coming up. Since we're driving with caution, we have to maintain a slow enough speed to stop at the next signal. So I'm going to go ahead and brake immediately. I did not realize the next signal was that close. Since we have a 40, there is a good chance that the train ahead of us slowed down even more, and we may be looking at a red signal. So we're half a mile out, we're coming around a curve. Let's go ahead and just apply the brake and lower our speed even more just to be certain. I will zoom in now and look for the signal. We're at 25 miles per hour, there's a red for the other track, and there is a red for us. So now we cannot speed up, we have to stop at this signal. I'm going to try to maintain a slower speed. It just turned yellow. But because it just turned yellow, we're going to go ahead and maintain the slower speed so the other train has time to get out of our way. If we did not look at the mini map, we would know by now that we're following another train, that there's not an obstruction of some sort or a faulty signal, and we would know that we have uh, something to keep in mind ahead of us here. 
You saw a weird loading glitch on the right there. Uh, I am on medium quality graphics, but the gra the things still load very oddly sometimes, and they cause the train to rock whenever that happens. So uh, if you see the train to rock once in a while, something is loading in the background. I'm not a fan of the way things load here. We need a new car for this game badly that meets at the uh, 2020 the year that I'm recording this. Uh, but we, I don't know if we're working, if uh, Dubshow Games is working that on that or not. And uh, given this is a really old route, I have a feeling this route may not get incorporated. Uh, the workshop version might be updated by someone to do that, but this route itself may not get incorporated. This is the Larkspur station, that's why you see the people wandering around here. They all look the same, interestingly. Notice that everyone looks exactly the same. They're they clearly uh, did their shopping at the same tourist destination, the same uh, t-shirt shop, but they only sell one shirt apparently. And they all also look the same. They are all the same black guy. <laughs> they all look the same. This must be the Jamaican spot. I'm not trying to make fun of people here, by the way, but it just almost seems like a Jamaican spot because they're all wearing... Um, Hawaiian shirts. Maybe they were in Hawaii. A cross between Jamaica and Hawaii, where they're all wearing Hawaiian shirts and they're all waiting for a train. So clearly this was a... Uh, you can tell this was an early route because the uh, passenger models were, only, were very singular at this point. Now, I am slowing down way too much, so I'm going to put some speed on now. Train coming. 1700, mixed freight. You notice the AI train did not use this whistle. For some reason, AI trains never bother to toot for railroad crossings. It would be a nice effect if they did, but I guess it's kind of hard to code that. Because then they have to know where every railroad crossing is on every single type of train. And that's just a programming nightmare, so they don't do that. We're coming up to a 50 speed limit, so we might be able to speed up for our signals now. So I was going so slowly that even though I'm driving under caution, I'm pretty sure the train ahead of us has passed the next signal by now. So uh, especially because we have a 50 speed limit coming up, but we still have to consider that we are driving under a caution. You can see the next signal ahead now, so I've eased off on the throttle. You can see it on the HUD, you can't see it on the screen yet. Because it's a fictional route, I'm going to just use the HUD. I mean, that, that's an excuse, but I use the HUD anyway. We are coming into the 50 right now. There's a sign for 50 miles per hour. We're also crossing a little bit of a bridge here, which uh, goes over a road. Let's call that Larkspur Road, because I don't know what the roads are here. As fiction, we can make that up. I have Christian the Larkspur Road. How far away are we from my monument? Glen Park South is, um, I can't tell right now. 
I want to see the signal, so let's do that first. You can see the yellow signal up ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and reapply throttle. have numbers under them as well. Even on this fictional route, the number, the signals seem to have been numbered, which I find very uh, interesting. So I'm not going to go all the way up to line speed again because we are under a caution. And we should, might be able to see, no we can't. Let me go out to the uh, outside view for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the task list. And uh, we are going over there seven miles away. So I've eased off the throttle since we are under yellow. I don't want to really get up to 40 at this point. Trying to stay as fast as speed as I can to see as much of the uh, road ahead as I can. Uh, that's why I keep putting the speed back up. And you can see the signal coming up now. So I have zero at the throttle. We're nine tenths of a mile away from it. We have a crossing here, as you can see coming up. signal again because the signals all seem to be around curves. I can't say that they planned the signals on this curve very on this route very well. There's not really good visibility for them. I mean there's being challenging and then there's being obnoxious. So as we make our way around the curve, we're a quarter of a mile from the signal, we see a yellow signal. So it's possible I might be going too slowly on this drive. That may be a possibility. And that is something I'm going to consider and uh, probably keep doing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead 
try and get up to 40 to give ourselves a little speed coming up to the next signal. But we are going to slow down in time for that signal. And that'll do. I'm going to cut it off right there. So from our bird's eye view, let's take a quick look at what is going on ahead. That's not how to do that. You see the train is still moving ahead of us. Another one is coming. So this cement freight is going to continue along around here just like we are. You may notice I did not pay attention to how fast the train was going. I'm going to go ahead and just keep guessing that because we're not supposed to know the train is, what speed the train is going. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep going at uh, whatever cautionary speed I have to. It is clear to me based on the words that on the yellows that we are not, the train ahead of us is not going the speed limit. So it's making this for a, lot, a bit of a longer train drive than we would otherwise expect. I don't know if the train ahead just has an engine problem or what's going on, but... We have to keep following it. Is another signal coming up now and uh, assuming that we were to know the railroad properly inside note we would be slowing down ourselves by this point which is why I took the throttle off and there's a train coming up as you can see 1740 and this is the S44 AC coincidentally enough seen one of those on this journey yet. So I think we have a straight look at the signal here. So zooming in, I can see a yellow. I'm going to go ahead and get up to speed again. I think every signal is 32-4. Did you see that? 32-4? I saw that on the last signal as well. So every signal has the same number. <laughs> so the tree is just insta pop in front of us. Now you may have noticed that a speed, a speed limit of 40 is coming up. Since we're under a yellow anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, not go past, especially because we're close to it anyway. So I might even drop down to 35 knowing the train ahead of us is going slow. And the only reason I know the train is going slow is because we had a red coming up on a 25 earlier. Even though those signals were close together, uh, I'm going to assume that means the train was going slowly. So 
So I'm going to start to reduce speed gradually again now. A speed between 35 and 40 is good until we're in range of the next signal. You should be going no faster than 30 under a yellow, but we take chances in this game. So one of the reasons I'm going at a faster speed right now is to see just what kind of distance the train has ahead of us. Going a little faster now will tell us if we're gaining on the train or if we are actually still in one block behind it. So we're going to come around the corner here. And we're actually blind to the signal. We're going faster than I intend to at this point. So I'm going to zero the throttle completely. This might have been a dangerous thing to do. So we have a, a nice batch of trees here. Nice forest. Gonna zoom in and see what the next signal says. Why were the signals all planted around curves? It's always a left turn or a right turn to get a signal. So that red is for the other track. That's a green above it. That's the other track though, our track shows yellow. The next signal is close. It's within eight tenths of a mile of this signal. That's the actual distance. So there is a possibility. We're going to Glen Park South still. We're not there yet. There is a possibility that this next signal could be red. We're gonna take that into account. Coming up on Glen Park South right now, you can see the uh, industry up ahead here. A little bit of a neighborhood here. And there is the industry. Let's look for the signal. Let's concentrate on our driving, shall we? I'm going to slow down because the distance of the signals tells me this is probably red. So I'm going to get jump on those brakes. Now you can probably look out the side window, but I'm going to use the front window. Let's get on top of the train. We can actually see it is a red up ahead, so we have to slow down. It just turned yellow as we were coming around the corner. So we are where we need to be right now, but now that the signal literally just changed yellow in front of us, we know that the next train is in one block ahead. The next signal is gonna be red for a while. We don't wanna go too fast. We are coming up now on a downhill. You can see that my throttle is zero and I am gaining speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just ride the brake at this point. We are now on our way to Monument Yard. We are two miles away from the Monument Yard approach. Let's go ahead and check our switches as we come up to Monument Yard. I'm gonna ignore the train for a moment. Actually the train, let's take a look. The train we know is gonna be continuing down here and along, we're going into the yard. So we're going to Monument Yard Approach, which is where it's passing right now. We're going to be coming into 
Monument Yard 2. That train is continuing down the track. Our switches appear to be set for us. Let's watch this other train as it continues on. So the other train is coming down to the main track right now. It seems to have two switches set, which is really strange. So this track is now out of our way. We're going to be clear to proceed now, but we do not know this yet. This train is going to go around the corner and it's going to basically cease to exist. Since we're under a yellow, we're going to continue to be driving cautiously here. We're going to stay under 30. We're on a 1.2% gradient as well, so this is quite a downhill. And you can see him coming around the corner now. He might actually come to a stop over there. There is a portal there, so he can exit. But he might be stopping. Yep, he's still going. So we got enough speed for the time being. We do have a signal coming up, which we are going to check. But if you want to see what happens when a train ceases to exist, here it is. He's going to be going via ECL1S. Or rather, EOL1S, sorry. He is continuing on. We're going to zoom in on the portal. We're going to see a signal up ahead here soon, but we're so far away, so we can watch this. This is what happens when a train uh, goes to a portal. That's interesting, he literally just stopped there. I expect him to go out the portal. He's struggling to do that. He didn't do what I thought he was gonna do, he just stayed there. Insta stop. That is uh, unrealistic. He's just inching towards the portal now. I hope he doesn't derail while we were because we were watching him. That might explain why the other trains got stuck in the uh, portal position in the uh, London Brighton scenario because the cache didn't clear that train from the other scenario, and it got stuck in that position where the portal was and caused a collision. So these trains never actually got properly moved off the map. It looks like we're, I'm gonna have to clear the cache on the. Uh, after this scenario, because otherwise that train might cause a problem. I might show you what I mean here. And another signal around a curve. Why is that? Yeah, you're just going to stay there, aren't you? You're literally going to stay there now. Okay, have fun down there. That's center on me because I don't care about that train anymore. You might have saw on the mini map that it's a yellow. We know it's going to be a yellow uh, based on that train we were just looking at, but the engineer doesn't. We're on a 2.3% gradient right now. And technically, we should not be going past 15, past that signal, so I'm going to actually go ahead and drop the speed back down to 15. 
Because I think it's supposed to apply at the signal, but I could be wrong. It might just apply when you enter the yard. It's warning us that we're going to be diverging off the track. We did not get the... Uh, the yellow there would have still been appropriate for that signal, being a flashing red. But um, for all we knew, it would have just been following the train. So this downhill makes our yard entry a little bit challenging. I'm just going to have to do a further brake application to uh, make sure we get down to 15 in time. Since we have the extra space, I'm going to use it. I'll do that further brake application now, 21%. We're now down at speed, so I'm going to drop to a 5% brake application. I'm still losing a lot of speed, so I'm going to release the brake for a moment. And I'm going to reapply it now that we have a reason to. Passing under a road. Let's call that Monument Road, shall we? Why not? So we're going to Monument Yard 2, that is our destination. We're going via Monument Yard approach north to get there. And we're now passing that orange point, so as we pass that orange point, the uh, marker will disappear for that. And the task is now completed. Stop at Monument Yard 2 in 0 0.38 miles. We arrive at it in 0 0.12 miles now. And I'm going to try to get the whole train into the uh, yard because I feel that's appropriate. We started losing a lot of speed there because the uh, because we ended up on flat ground. So now I'm going to let the uh, train pick up some speed on the back of the hill. But I got the train back up to 10 myself and I'm just letting it coast at this point. If we start losing speed, I will increase slightly so we can uh, get to our stop quicker. And as we enter Monument Yard 2, I want to say if you like what you saw here today, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more like this. Uh, there's our indication of our destination up ahead there. I will be continuing with Castle Rock for at least the next couple scenarios here. I think I have about two more I can do with the SD40, not counting the career scenario. I'll do the career scenarios another time. But I'm going to do these other SD40 scenarios on the standard mode. I also am going to take this SD40 over to Cap at over to the Cahoon Pass, and I'm going to do some work to the, on the Cahoon Pass with this train as well. So we do have uh, some activities with the SD40 coming up. Right now, the SD40 is going to be the train that we concentrate on. So I think our mile marker is behind us now. We are now fully within the yard, so I am going to go a moment longer and then I'll come to a stop. There we go. Slowing down now. I'm going to go far enough that I just get past this set of cars here, and after I'm past this set of cars, I will come to a stop. So if you just watch from back here, this tell you can see the signal there by the way. This will show you what we're looking at. And now I'm gonna put the brakes on very sharp application, take them back off for a moment to ease forward. And at this point we can assume there's a guy in the yard helping us, so this is perfectly legit. I'm going to actually take the spot of that guy. There we go. And I'll break right here. And that's the scenario. Where's that train, by the way? Yeah, have fun there. He actually did make his way to the portal somehow, but he didn't disappear. Fun times. Good 
run. Okay. The intermodal freight has been delivered to the correct location. Scenario completed. Thank you. So yeah, we have two more scenarios to do on this uh, particular route right now, as I said earlier. Those two scenarios, as I'm going to show you in a moment, uh, apparently I exceeded passenger freight level. That was when I had a sudden need to hit the brake there. But let's go ahead and uh, get back to standard mode here. And as you can see, I have two more scenarios too. I have the bunch of Cahoon Pass up here that I've already done. So you can see I have the SD40 waiting on Cahoon Pass. Uh, we do have the cold empty to monument to do, and we also have deliveries to monument to do. Uh, now the deliveries to monument is another one that starts from Castle Rock Cement. I'm gonna do coal empties next because it is coming from Larkspur. It's a little bit of a smaller drive. And I'm gonna show you that one next. For now, make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more. Again, like the video. I'm Cyclone. Have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you. You're part of the world. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.